Is it audible? Yes, sir. Okay. So what we'll do is today uh, the two batches uh, which already completed the lab, no? Uh, that is the B three batch and the B two batch. So you can need not attend the class today's session. Only the B one batch only stay here today. For today's session, so because I will just repeat what is I have done for other two batches, so it will be easy for me to continue the topic theory. Otherwise, they will not understand today if I continue with analog other th other things. So we will have one session on Saturday to compensate this class. Well, one extra class we'll see. So only the B1 students stay in the meet. Uh, the B2 and B3 can quit the session. You can do whatever you want. You can practice something else. You could do. It. Only the B1 batch, the lab batch, stay here for today's session. So I will repeat what is I have done for B2 and B3. So then we will continue tomorrow. B1, Jay Kishan, Jay Kumar, are you there? Answer your attendance, B1. Uh, Jay Kishan, are you there? Okay, Jiril Sabanjoy. Yes, sir. Jinka Rakesh. Yes, sir. Anirudh. Anirudh JM. Okay, Prasanna KM. Present, sir. Uh, Karthik Bharadwaj. Present, sir. Uh, Kirtan Kumar. Present, sir. <coughs> Ketan Riship. Kushi Arora. Present, sir. Shashidhar Reddy. Present, sir. Likita. Present, sir. Kaushik. Kritika. Shitich. Kumar Prakar, Lavi Vishani, Present, sir. Maharud, Maharudra, Mahendra, Present, sir. Mahesh Baskar, Present, sir. Madhavika, <coughs> Present, sir. Manali. Present, sir. Mandi Mandira. Present, sir. Manish. Manish. Mayank Agarwal. Present, sir. Okay.
Okay. So today what I'm going to discuss is, I'm going to just demonstrate you <coughs> a, a simulator where you can able to do Arduino circuits and able to program the Arduino board and build the projects using an Arduino. So for the first lab, one or two lab, we use that one platform. And also to further explanation, the theory class requires practice of that uh, uh, platform. So I would like to do for your batch so that you can practice it and keep it ready for Friday's lab. That is whenever you have the lab. So you can show me your projects using that. So some of you, maybe majority of you would already worked in Arduino platform using Proteas or Tinkercad or on the board to make sure that everyone knows in the batch, those who are first time to the Arduino system or to the hardware platform. So keeping in mind that those students, I'm just doing from the very, very basic fundamentals. So those who are learning for the first time, so follow me, you can able to understand this uh, programming and interfacing using Arduino. So <clears throat> I will share uh, the screen. Uh, that is a the login screen for that platform. <laughs> is the Tinkercad screen is visible for you? Yes, sir. Yeah. So, uh, tinkercad.com dash boat, correct? No, or you can log in. So, once you log in here, uh, it lasts for uh, your Gmail identity. So, then once you log in in the Gmail, log in through Gmail account, <clears throat> you can get this screen. So, this is the platform. You can do a lot of things. So we are using this platform, Tinkercad, for building the circuits using an Arduino board and running the programs on the boards which have been created in the Tinkercad. So this type of usage of software for testing the circuits is called as simulation. So we are doing the circuit simulation. So many a times, these simulations, whatever you conduct, it may not work when actually perform on the actual hardware because the components what has been provided in the simulator and their specifications exactly may not match with whatever you use there or even though you purchase the components with the same specifications and use it they may not actually provide the quality as per the specification indicated in the uh, on the component for example if you purchase a particular component they indicate that the specifications what ratings of the current, voltage ratings, other things, power specification, everything they give it. But they may not be manufactured to that quality. So that naturally what will happen, the performance of the system varies even though it has worked in the simulator. That is why, so this learning will be helpful to 20% extent, 20 to 30%, maybe some experiments to the 40% extent. But overall, actually when you build the circuit on the board and make it work, that is a real story because there's a lot of issues are there. Issues in the board, issues in the components, issues in the interface, issues in the software integration or downloading the program and issues with your laptop, with the driver. So many issues will be there. So that is why I generally recommend you order one Arduino board and few components and experiment it. When you build, when you want to build a project, a product, it is actually you should, you should uh, make your hands dirty. You have to put certain things on the board. You have to try out certain things. Then only you'll be learning. But this gives a confidence that, yes, my project is going to work. So that confidence you'll get in the simulator. <clears throat> so I'll start with the fundamentals. So how do we start? So this recording, I'll send you. It's already there in the, for the last class. I've done it. So I'll send you later. So you can note down. It's very basic steps. So first, click on the circuits. So those who are doing for the first time, listen to me carefully. So I want to build a circuit. First, click on the circuits. Then create the new circuit. So once you click on the create a new circuit, <coughs> then the canvas is, vis is visible for you to place any of the components. So then what I'll do is I have to choose what components are required. So now since I'm using an Arduino board, so there are the listing is there, basic and advanced. In the basic only, these components are available, visible. You can take the basic. You can choose, you can drag your screen on the right side. All the components, pictures are available. So go to the board, Arduino Uno. 
So just click on that so that the board is available here. So once the board is available, place the board wherever you require, give the name for the board. So for example, I can give you know one. Hmm? So if there's only one board is there, it does not matter. But when you want to establish communication between two boards, you require two boards. In such cases, proper name. Naming and identification will be useful for you. So once you have uh, board is available for you, then the question is test whether the board is working or not. So when you want to test the board is working or not, so you require actual laptop, Arduino Studio, and the required cable, everything is required. When you want to install all those things, Arduino Studio and everything, then you can test it. Then after connections are made, everything is made, what is the first thing generally we do with a microcontroller-based system is see that anything LED is present in the board, which is already built in on the board, which I can make it on and off. If I'm able to make it on and off, that means that my connections to the board from the laptop is proper. My programming environment is proper so that I can program the, the board properly. So what should I do? I should be able to locate an LED. See, this here is an LED is available, LED L indicated by L. It is very near to the pin number 13 in the uh, Arduino board. So that means that one LED is built, built on the board, which is connected to pin number 13. So no other such LEDs are connected correct now on the board. Only one LED is available for which is connected to the port pin called 13. Now I will write a program. So and then run that program on this board and see that LED is working. So in actually in actual thing, you have to use Arduino Studio, open the Arduino Studio where you have to write your code and then put that code onto this on this board. But now since Arduino Studio we are not using, we are using a simulator. This simulator, so fortunately they provide the same environment. Whatever you see in the Arduino Studio, same thing you see in the simulator also. No difference is there. So that means that code, whatever you write in the simulator, you can download this code and the same code you can use it in the Arduino Studio to, act, to run that program on the actual board. So whatever the efforts you put on the simulator will not be wasted because same is compatible. Now, how do you start writing the code for this one? So there's a block called look at the right and the top and the top side here, top tab. So code is there. So I click on the code. So when you click on the code, the different ways you can develop the program. Those who are the beginners, you can use a block level block coding. Since we are already learned the C language, we don't require the block coding. So I'll go to the text based coding. That is, we type the commands, instructions, function names directly. So I'll use a text based coding. So now there is a way you can write the program like this. So I will remove this one and I will also expect you to remove that one. Don't use any ready made code. Whatever you are going to write, type the code and use it. So it will be comfortable for you to in the beginning to learn. Otherwise, what will happen is so <clears throat> you will not be in a position to understand certain things. When you want to develop certain things, which ready code is not available, you will be in a fix. So it is better always you type the code. You try on your own, only wherever required, you just copy and paste the code, at least in a few sessions, you will understand them better. So how do we start writing the function? The whole programming consists of, it is consists of two functions. One is void setup, void setup. So is a one function. So the second function is, so void loop is a other function. So look at these two functions. Generally, when we write a program all these days in a normal C language, there was a only one function which is an essential to develop your C program. What is the function? Void main. That was the only function available. So that is way that is a normal systems will work. <clears throat> in normal programs, what you do, whatever you write inside the main will work from the top to the beginning. Once everything is finished, you return back to the operating system. That is OS, whether Windows or Linux, your job is finished. There is a OS is there, it will go back to here. But in small boards like Arduino, Arduino boards, there is no OS is present here. There is no Windows, there is no Linux here. That means that whatever you write a code, after you execute, there is no question of going back to somewhere. 
So in normal computers, whatever the develop, you develop an application. When you exit or close the application, there is a place to go back. Here, there is no place to go back. So that means that what do you mean by going back? No, it's going to hang your system. That's all. So you have to be in the place wherever either in this function or in this function should be here only. So that is why the concept of looping has been introduced into the embedded systems where there is a support of OS will not be there. Now, so the main function which you are going to use in the C language that is an essential and the fundamental function which is required your program to work here that mine is equal into two functions here setup and the loop. So these two functions are very essential block. They are essential. Without that, it will not work. It is in the sense the standard for Arduino Studio is always it has got a two functions. One is a setup function and the loop. These are essential. You cannot change the name for these two functions. Apart from these two, you can write any number of functions, user defined functions below them. So you can call them inside these functions. But the basic two, these two functions should exist and the return type is fixed and there is no arguments for those two functions. Now, what is the job of the setup function? Whatever the jobs which has to be executed only once, for example, I have to configure the, the mode of these pins or I have to configure uh, the Wi-Fi, the password and other things. The things which has to be done only one time during the program, you have to put it here. That is initialization, only one time which is required. The things which has to be repeatedly executed, you have to put it here. So. What is the meaning of repeated execution? For example, look at an embedded system called washing machine. How does the embedded system in a washing machine will work? <clears throat> so it's always waits for what? User to press certain switches. Maybe you power on, you start the washing, maybe set certain things and then say start. So after the washing cycle is over, does it, does it should stop? No, it will again go back to the beginning. Again, expect from the user what is the input required. That means that after every time usage is completed, again, it comes back to the beginning and wait for the user to feed the input. So that means that in the beginning of the loop, it expects certain information from the user, perform the job. After the performing, it expects what? It go back to the again beginning of the uh, code that is waiting for the user. So all embedded system work in the same principle. That means that set of code will be executed repeatedly. So what is the set of code generally? Read from the user. Find what is the task to be performed, perform the task, come back to the beginning. Again, do that, come back to the beginning. So these set of tasks should be repeatedly executed. This is the fundamental nature of any embedded system you observe. Whereas in a normal operating system, when you write a C code, so it is what? It executes everything from the top line, the beginning line to the end line and return to operating system. So that is, the, that is what the feature required in normal computers. If at all looping is required, you implement the loop. But normal behavior is what? Execute the set of instruction from the first to beginning, go back to the OS. So that behavior is not being required in the embedded system because there is no OS is there. Here, set of instructions are repeatedly executed. Then only it will be called as an embedded system. So that is why they divided the main functionality into two types. The things which are to be executed only once, put in the setup. The things which has to be repeatedly executed, put in the, the loop. Am I audible? Okay, yes, sir. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so then once I've understood there is a requirement of two functions. So now I have to write a code for the, how do we start writing the code for Arduino? So writing the code for Arduino is, I have to, let's say I said already, my first task when I get a board is what? Identify for an LED, make that LED on and off so that my basic thing will be tested. Now I know that it's connected to pin number 13. So since pin number 13 is a digital pin, I will be using the digital pin. Before using any of the digital pins in Arduino, it is your responsibility to configure the digital pin as input or output, any, any microcontroller. This is the fundamental requirement. If you want to use a digital input output pin, decide whether you are using that pin for sending the information or receiving the information. In this case, LED is an output device. I am sending the information to the LED. So I'm configuring the pin as what? Output. So Arduino has given a set of functions, really built in functions. So I'll be using those functions provided by the Arduino library or Arduino software. So to implement my projects, but in the unit two, three, four, five, whatever there in the unit two, three, four, five, you will be learning to develop these functions your own self. That is why Arduino is very at the abstract level for the beginners. See, for the beginners, those who don't know any about the engineering knowledge, you can start using an Arduino. Once you become an engineer, 
we will be writing our own functions like this what is inside these functions you will be understanding in the further unit unit 2 to 5 when you study about the building your own rm board which is equal into arduino so now in a since you are in the first unit let's understand what is the meaning of the function that's all what is inside the function it is not my concern now at this level so the first function which is available i am going to use is so it is a case sensitive as it is in the c language in mode of 13 i want to give it so i am using it as an output so i'll write output so this is the job so pin mode is the function provided to configure the digital input output pins as a input pin or output pin so i've used a pin mode i have configured a pin number 13 as an output it there is always a facility is there to instead of using the pin numbers i can give a name for the pin i can use a name for that if you want to do that one since the number uh, which is not uh, which is which is same uh, in the whole program which is not going to be uh, modified by the user so we will declare that as a nor instead of normal integer constant integer so constant integer so i want to give that let's say it's an led led equals the number 13 semicolon so this is the way we can give a name for a number so what is an advantage if i'm using the 13 in so many places in my program i can it is equal to what replacing uh, replacing the uh, led with the 13 that is wherever 13 is referred led wherever i refer led automatically 13 will be referred advantage is if if you change the pin number for the whole of the project you, you need not go through the whole of the code just change it here so if you feel that this led i don't want to use 13 i want to use a 2 just change it here and change in your circuit you don't require to look at the whole code that is why it's always better to refer the names rather than the pin numbers in the code so to start with to get used to that understanding the meaning of the function i am just referring the numbers i am not referring the names you can always replace instead of 13 you can type led here okay then once i start the loop what is the job i have to do i have to make this led on so arduino provides two functions to perform the uh, data exchange through these pins what are the data exchange i can do one thing is i can send the data out of the pin or i can receive the data on these pins to send the data out of the pins they provided a function called digital write so digital write is a function they provided digital write so which pin i want to do 13 so what i can do a digital write function facilitates to provide facilitates to write the required data and the pin number now what is the pin number 13 on this pin number 13 i can write 1 or i can write 0 so as it's already defined so predefined i can just say high so high in the sense what i'm writing 1 to the pin number 13 because the digital means i can write 1 or 0 so i can write what here high or i can write a low so whenever i use a digital write and the pin number high then the data will be applied on that particular pin when you execute that instruction so we will assume that it's connected to a common anode we'll understand after this session what is common anode common cathode so now you just believe that when i say one led glows zero means led does not glow now my program first program is ready so what should i do now after the program is done there is a what is called as a start simulation start simulation means it can transfer this code onto the chip and then run the program on the chip and produces the required effect so i'll say start simulation if any error is there it will show the error on this one <clears throat> now we can see that this this led color has changed see that its color has changed see if i stop simulation color becomes block see led is not blowing so now say start simulation see that color has changed so that mean that so that means that my logic is working now i'll make the led blinking so what i'll do it i will after that function I will call the delay function. I will write, I will stop the simulation. So I will write delay function, delay of let's say 500 milliseconds. So what is the delay function? Delay is a built-in function. It can take one argument indicating how many milliseconds you want. If I write delay half thousand, that means that it, it produces actually delay of one second after it's a blocking call that means that unless it completes that time it will not come out of that function so you should be very careful when you use a blocking call that means that time to that extent of time your system is not responsive it's an embedded system very 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 important 
what is the meaning of responsive systems that mean that let's say you are developing a system it should be responsive enough within 5 seconds that mean that no blocking call of 5 seconds should be there in anywhere in the code now which a 1 second is negligible in this application okay you 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 can live like that so whenever you use a blocking call make sure that it it makes the system not responsive to what extent not responsive depends upon the amount of delay you are calling that you should keep it in mind so for that they have provided calling concepts called interrupts has been given asynchronous communication async methods of uh, calling or invoking uh, functions has been given that mean that so you are doing something even you are there in the delay i want to receive the request coming from other devices that mean for that we use we use a concept called interrupts that we study in the unit 4 so now uh, i am not introducing any interrupts here so then digital write digital write so i will write now and the pin number 13 so low i will make it low okay so then i again i give a delay of 500 it's very important two delays many times we get confusion in the embedded system why require delay why this delay so first i'll write high then i'll make it delay and then low then what will happen if you don't give this delay what will happen immediately after this statement it jumps so frequently immediately because no time it works in megahertz immediately after this right low it go back to this digital right so what will happen you don't uh, see the led becoming low so one moment one moment i'll come back so so we it will not come back to low so many a projects people find this situation that mean that they will not introduce the second delay so they think that oh, i am making one and this become zero so it will work no after the statement what is you are doing it's very important if without delay means what will happen even though you are executing the statement but immediately you come back to the statement in no time it's it's working in megahertz in no time it's nothing but the statement is irre ir not relevant at all yes or no so it should be very important to put proper delays and understand the meaning of that so that is why when you write a make a mistake you understand many things in embedded systems when you copy the code and run it many things you will not understand when you do a bigger project you will stuck up you will never you are not able to solve the problems that is why i, I told you to star uh, don't copy the code you type the code you see that you assume certain uh, case, scenario you try to solve that problem yourself that you will able to solve the bigger problems so now i'll start the simulation so now you can see the blinking of this led is going on so that mean that so now my board is working fine that mean the connection is proper the driver is proper programmer is proper the basic functionality of the board is good once this is done other things easy to understand and learn so now we'll go to the next one so i'll stop the simulation so now i will add certain components to the board directly from the outside how do you add the components to the how do you make the wiring for that we will see now okay so now i'll take one component called led i will take uh, led so i got a component led i just drag that keep it so leds will have a two you can change the color when you get like this you can change the color you require for example i want a green led i can change the green led you can give a name for the led led 1 led 2 like that now leds will have two terminals one is called cathode other is called as anode so whenever the current flows that is current flows from anode to cathode led glows that is a principle now so we have to connect an led now i want to connect this is there is only one led on the board now i want extra led so that is why i take an extra led i want to connect this led to this uh, arduino board so what pins are available we know already led is a digital device in the sense you require one and zero to make it on and off so i require a digital pins i don't require analog pins so i have to use any pin between 0 to 30 anything i can use it anything including with a tilt i can use anything so i'll just take randomly seven so now i have to make a connection to this one so now if i want to send one led should glow means it's a common anode configuration so uh, uh, it, it is a it is not a common anode so we will just study about that with the seven segment display let's uh, forget about the terminals here now say i want to now my requirement is if i send one the led should glow if i send zero the led should be off that is my requirement 
So what should I do it? So now if I send one LED should glow means send one means what? One means five volts. That is higher voltage should make the LED uh, current flow through the anode and comes to the cathode. So that I will select the seven. So once you select, click on that, then you can drag your mouse from there. You will get a wire that is a patch card. So make the connection. So you can leave the mouse cursor mouse and again you can you can place it there wherever required. Once you reach there, so you put the wire patch card into the rectangular box of the design anode point. You can just leave it. So you can click once and leave it. So now connection has been made. I can change the color of this patch card. So let's say if I want this is to be a red color, I just say red color. Okay. Now what does it mean that the the pin number seven is connected to the anode of the LED. Hmm? Now I'll take the cathode. So now I want to connect to the cathode to where. So whenever the current flows through the anode, cathode should consume the current. That means it should be connected to the ground. So where is the ground is available? So ground is available either here you can connect to this ground or you can connect to this ground. So I will connect it to here. So I will select to here. I connect to here. So I have connected a ground. So what is the color I require for that? Let's say black. I just connected it. So now, so my connections are completed. That means that when I send one, the current flows like this and goes to the ground. It should be able to work. My design is completed. I'll go to the code now. I'll see what is the code required. Since I'm using a pin mode seven, so I will copy the statement. Control C. Then I'll put it here. Then, so it is a pin number seven I've used. So what is the meaning of the seven? Seven used to be used as an output. So I just put the statement here. Now I don't want to remove this logic. Let this logic can be there as it is. And you can blink this LED also, this LED also. Or you don't want to do that. You want to change this itself. You can change this itself. Now I'll remove the seven, 13. I'll put the seven here, seven here. So here also what I can do is, so here also, if you don't want, since I'm using that one, you can comment that one. So like a C language, you can comment that line. Now I'll compile that. Now after compiling, I just see that whether it's working or not. See that LED is blinking. That means that my connection and my program is proper. But there is an exclamatory mark. There's an exclamatory mark. So which is there next to the LED. So what is the meaning of that exclamatory? You can read that, you can place that. It is showing the, some information. What is the information it is showing? I will read for you. So that means normally LED should be recommended to consume 20 milliamperes while it's working. So if you are able to drive more than 20 milliamperes into the LED, the life of the LED will come down. So that means that, so I am driving a current through this LED, which is more than required for the LED. So that what will happen, the life of the LED will come down. So what should I do it? I have to limit the current. How much is a recommended current as it says 20 milliampere generally for the LEDs. So to reduce the uh, to reduce the current, we, the basic principle in electronics, what you study is what current limiting resistor I have to use. I have to use a resistor in series with a, either uh, in a, either in the through the cathode side or the anode side. So that current will be limited in the circuit. So now I will introduce a resistor here. So what I'll do is I'll just go to the circuit. So I will stop the simulation. I'll go to the register. I'll drag some resistors. So now I'll make certain connections. So what are the connections required? So now I'll remove this one. I'll select that wire. I'll remove that one using a delete key. So now I will configure this resistance to whatever the required. So generally for around 20 milliamperes to get the current, you require around 330 ohms. So ohms, how much I require? So 330 ohms. So in terms of 200 to 330 ohms, you can choose it. So 330 ohms, I just selected it. Now value of the resistor, I've selected it. Now I will place this in, in between the seven and the anode. So I will select the seven. So I will make the connection. So I will place it there. Okay. Now I'll take another wire. And now I'll connect to here and so I will change the color instead of green to, let's say, uh, red here. So this also I'll make it uh, red. 
Okay. So now look at this. Now it's written. If you want to change the orientation of the component, you can use this. There's a rotation is there. You can change the orientation, whatever the way you want. So you can change the orientation. Hmm? You can make it horizontal or whatever the way you can do it. You can change the orientation of this resistor. So now we will see that we will run the program. See that that exclamatory mark has removed. See that the exclamatory mark which was coming next to the LED has been removed. So that means that so your your design hardware design is perfect and your code is also perfect. So it is going to last for long. Otherwise, LED would have damaged after certain usage. Like this, you can learn certain principles when you use a simulator. So now we have understood this one. Now I'll introduce another complexity into this problem. Is it audible? Yes, Are sir. you understood? Audible? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. So now I will introduce one more component to make it more interesting. Now this device is an output device. I will introduce now one input device, which is a fundamental input device which is required in any embedded system. Without that, embedded system is not complete. So that is the switch. So switches will be of two types. One is a toggle switch, other is called a push button switches. So we will learn in the first experiment, push button switch. You can look at here in the figure, the right side push button switch is there. I will select the push button switch. I will use it here. Now, what is the principle of the push button switch? What is the principle of the push button switch? So push button switch has got two terminals. You can see, look at this. This is terminal 1A, terminal 2A. This is 1B and the 2B. Actually, we, it is a, we can use either 1A, 1A and 2A we can use, or we can use 1B and 2B. Any two pins are sufficient for us. The two terminals are good enough. So they are provided for only for mechanical stability or so maybe for the PCB fabrication or routing, it may be helpful. But generally, either I can use either these top two or I can use the bottom two. So 1A and 2A, I'll be using. So even though 4 is there, we'll be using either 1A, 2A or 1B, 2B. How does it work? That means that the connection between the 1A and the 2A is not existed. It will not be there in the beginning. If you take the, check the, take the multimeter and measure the resistance between these two, it shows no connectivity. That means in the sense, so no connection exists. Infinite uh, ohms will be there. So when you press this button and check the connectivity in the multimeter between these two points, you can see buzzer sound. In the sense, it is getting shorted. That means that when you press this one, both will get shorted. It is nothing but a continuous line. It's like a switch closing. When you press this one, this gets connected to this one. That is the meaning how it works. Now I will make the connection such that when I press the switch, then LED should blink. LED blinking should happen. When I don't press it, LED blinking should not happen. This is the logic I want to introduce it. Now I want to connect the switch to this Arduino board. Where do I connect it? Switch is an input device or an output device. Switch is an input device because you are giving certain information to the Arduino board. Switch is a digital device or analog device. Switch gives only two values, either on or off. So that means it's a digital device. So I should not use analog. I should use digital. So now I'll be using the switch as a digital device and I'll be using one of the 13, one of the 14 pins to read the switch input. Anything I can use it. Let I randomly I have chosen the pin number two to read the data from this one. So what should I do it now? Since I set these are the two points which are either internally connected or disconnected based on the switch press, I'll be using these two pins. Either this or this, any one of these randomly I can use it and connect to pin number two. So I will click on the pin number two. So I will just drag it. Okay, I will bring the board little down, the wire also little down. Okay, so now I'll click on the pin number two. So I have connected to one pin number two. So what I did, I just, <coughs> I just randomly did some connection, pin number two. Now, what should I do with the pin number, other pin? So that is where you have to understand some principle of interfacing. What is an interfacing? We use the word interfacing now on. Interfacing is a technique 
or the science behind connecting one controller to number of peripherals in the devices. There's a rules and regulations is there in interfacing. You should be able to match the devices principles of working. There is a, some principle of working for this. There is a principle of working for a switch. You should understand what is the principle of working of this principle of working of this. Then only you can able to interface. So interface is a knowledge you develop when you encounter different types of devices. Once you have the knowledge of interfacing, understanding of all the devices, then building the circuits becomes very simple. Now, what is the principle of working of this one? This is a no principle. The principle is what? It, these two points gets connected or not connected. That's all. So only device as it is, I cannot interface to the microcontroller. I require <clears throat> certain logics to be developed, such so, so the circuits to be developed around the, the switch to make it work properly. Now, so what is the logic I have to develop it? Now, whenever switch is not pressed, this point, whichever you connected to the pin number two, should receive certain voltage. What voltage it can receive since it's a digital device? Either it should receive zero or one. Whenever you press the switch, then what will happen? The same pin which is uh, connected to the switch should be able to receive the opposite of the voltage, whatever you're given when the switch is not pressed. Let us assume the uh, zero case. Uh, first zero when the switch is not pressed. I'm assuming like that. When the switch is not pressed, I'll assume that zero will be communicated on this line. So when I press the switch, then what should be communicated opposite of that means five should be communicated on this pin. Then there is a change will happen on this pin so that the microcontroller can recognize there is a something is pressed outside. Now, two things have to do it. Number one, so when nothing is pressed, I should be able to establish a zero voltage at this point. When it is pressed, I should establish a five volts at this point. I look at the first case now, a second case. When it is pressed, what will happen? These two gets connected. So when these two get connected, if I keep five volts at this point readily available, then what will happen? So when you press, since it's connected automatically, five volts which is available here will communicate and pass to this point. So I'll connect this to a five volts. So where is the five volts available on the board? So you can see that five volts are available on the below. So it's available here below, five volts available. So I will just take, take my cursor here. I'll take the five volts point. I'll put it here. I'll just take it here. I will connect it to here. Let's see, this is a five volts. So I will use a red color. So for the power supply, so red. Now five volts ready. So whenever the switch is pressed, what will happen? The five volts will pass through this one and will go like this and it comes to one. So the beam one will be applied. Now, when the switch is not pressed, I want zero on this point. Is there zero is guaranteed here? No. Since see that there is no zero is directly available here. When your switch is not pressed, whatever this wire is available at the wire end, what is available here? Nothing is available here. That means that noise can pick up. When the wire is not being guaranteed of zero voltage, anything can pick up at the wire. Yes or no? Because you're not guaranteeing the zero voltage here. So wire is open. So that means any noise can affect this point. So it is better you have to ensure the zero voltage here always. So when the switch is not pressed to so that there is a guarantee that zero is applied at that point. For that, we use a resistor and use a concept called pull down. So I am pulling down this point to the ground through a resistor so that always zero is established at this point when the switch is not pressed. So I will bring one resistor here. So I will, whenever you use a pull down concept, we use a resistor of kilo ohms. So 10 kilo ohms or 4.7 kilo ohms, it's high value is required. So I've used 10 kilo ohms. Then I'll take one wire here. So I will connect this to this point. So now I left that point. Now that point, I want to ground it. The ground is also available here. So I will take this point here. So I will bring it here and connect to this ground point. So now what will happen? Now I am pulling down this point to ground. What does it mean that? That means that when the switch is not pressed, since you are you're pulled down this point to ground, the zero is applied here. Only when the switch is pressed, when what will happen? high voltage is applied. If I am not used resistor here, then what will happen? It's like a permanent pull down, even though when the switch is pressed, what will happen? This is ground zero, this is ground and VC, they get shorted and the power supply and the board will go away. So that is why make sure that resistor is important. If the resistor is skipped, what will happen? When you give, when you press this one, power supply will get short. So uh, proper usage of resistance is very important. Now my logic is, my circuit is completed. I have done the connections. So one is connected to five volts, other is connected to pull down resistor and the grounded and the same point where I want to receive the data from the switch is being connected here. 
so this circuit is called as interfacing circuit to get the required output which is compatible with an arduino or microcontroller boards is called as an interfacing now i will modify my code what is the code i required to change so the code i required to change is what i will introduce the uh, the new logics what is required let's say i am going to use another pin called pin number 2 i am using that pin number as what input i configure it now pin number mode i use 2 and i configure as what 2 now digital write is a function available in arduino to write something onto the pins now the 2 i am not generating the data 2 i am using to receive the data on the pin number 2 so i am reading the data on the air what type of reading it's a digital pin sir so what is the function is digital it's a digital read digital read is a function i'm using how many arguments you require you are not writing when you write two arguments required when you read only one argument what is the pin number let's say pin number is 2 so this function will give me what this this is the function which gives me the data what is present in the pin number 2 so now what is the that type of data it is a zero or one because it's a digital pins so you can use a boolean functions so i am just using an integer to start with integer switch state or something i'll give it switch state anything you any variable name you can give it so i am just giving like that so what is that i am doing i am reading in a variable switch state digital read value so what will happen whatever the data you have read from here will be stored in a variable so what is the value you contain in the variable either it will be high or low so i'll be using that value so switch state switch state so equals high i'll be using it so and then i will put them in a loop so then what will happen only when the switch is pressed and i hold the switch then this logic will work otherwise this logic is not going to work so we will see that now does it work or not now i'll press the switch see that when you press the switch and hold the switch i am pressing the switch top of the switch i am holding my mouse key left key so now blinking will happen if i leave the button so it's not working again if i press it it will work if i leave it will not work so i am controlling that one so i am able to with this experiment i am able to understand what is a digital input device what is a digital output device how to read them using the uh, digital input output pins what are the two functions required so what are the mode in which we have to set the pins before we start using it how to do the wiring for the arduino board so if any doubt you can raise certain doubts yeah if you have any doubts you can raise some questions i'll take another 10 15 minutes so if you have any other doubts you can raise sir yeah i have a doubt Uh, if uh, the cpu is continuously running the loop uh, function yeah then uh, won't it be inefficient like instead of waiting for an interrupt uh, it's always running a loop function yeah if you let's say let's say you want to make it efficient you have got a washing machine in your house if you switch hmm. on washing machine let's say program is not working so as a program is not looping as you say is yes it now so hmm. but the washing machine is switched on you call it as inefficient or inefficient no not like that uh, ah. instead of waiting uh, looping uh, when the switch state is off can okay. we make it like uh, get uh, started C running on the cpu only when switch is on yeah that is what is called as sleep mode then you the processor only you have to change so while processor there is a what is called sleep mode idle mode will be there normal wake up mode is there so now now latest mm -hmm. microcontrollers all will have that mode so in the sense in such cases what will happen it will automatically go to the sleep mode So in the sleep mode means your program is not going to work, but interrupts are enabled. So when you touch something, device, is it now? When key is pressed, then immediately go to automatically program starts executing. That mode you can put it. So then it will okay. be efficient. You understood my question, my answer. Uh, yes, sir. And ah, so you have to put the microcontroller into that mode, is it now? So then it will be idle mode. So why that is required? Because many times what will happen you switch on the device yes or no but you don't use you forget to switch off 
in such cases what will happen if there is no activity happens on the device like including mobile you have seen no so automatically it is intelligent enough it will go to the idle mode idle mode in the sense most of the uh, modules of the microcontroller will be switched off it is disconnected no power is supplied only certain logics will be working so when that logics will be enabled again when some interrupt certain activity as soon as happens suddenly immediately it comes to the wake up mode that is a one method but you, you uh, if you are thinking that i am wasting my i mean uh, cpu efficiency by keep it repeatedly doing means what i am telling is it is nothing but switching on a device and not doing anything you understood see if you switch on a washing machine and make the program not working also you are wasting the time and program working is also wasting the power unless you switch off the device in embedded system there is no way of saving the power okay sir you have to switch off see it's right. continuously running means but you are given the power yes sir now unless you switch off the power even let's say loop is not there then what will happen in a normal computer it go go to the operating system it will be there in the windows what is the windows is doing windows is doing looping your os is what is the job it's doing it's a looping only you are not seeing that but inside the os is what basically it's looping expecting the request coming from the different devices and different services yes sir now unless you switch off your system nothing okay uh, stopping the program is of no use because no question of stopping because what is the job of a microcontroller processor doing something either it is happening at the os level or it is happening at your application level okay so others is it audible and understood mahindra cs yes sir kartik bharadwaj kartik yes sir likita yes sir okay so now we will go to uh, little more you have to bear with me another 10 15 minutes today because i have to complete this for others i have completed okay uh, now i have shown you uh, how to uh, do the components through the uh, through placing the components in the canvas directly like this that is without uh, using any other boards i have connected the components like this this is possible when you have a less number of components let's say i i will take another 5 3 5 6 components all of the 5 6 components requires a power supply let's say 5 volts is required then there is a only one 5 volts point here see taking the wire from the you can take one patch cord from this point i cannot connect more than one wire at this point then no way you can able to build the circuit and for example same thing is a ground there are two three grounds are available i require more than six wires to be connected to the ground points then it's not possible and also when the components are more where do you place all these components it will be all confused confusion will be there in the circuits it is very difficult to debug your circuits also so to solve these type of problems people generally use a concept called breadboard so now i will build this circuit using a breadboard so i will demonstrate you how to use a breadboard so i will remove the wiring only i'll keep the components like that i am selecting and deleting i am selecting and deleting so i'll keep all my components okay so now i will drag here look for a component called the breadboard so see that breadboard is available under here the basic components so i have breadboard small available i i bring the breadboard so once i bring the breadboard connection here so now i have to place the components in the breadboard let's understand the working of a breadboard if i place my cursor here cursor here you can see that there is you can see that connections you can if i place my cursor on the a you can see that a b c d e they are all internally connected in the sense in the breadboard internally they have connected all these points it is in the sense that for example i said there is only one 5 volts points are there i cannot connect more than one wire here but if there are six wires are there i want to connect all the six wires to the same point how it is possible it is not possible with the with the arduino board then what they do is they bring the 5 volts point to one of this point and then i can use the remaining b c d e f so uh, points to connect to the vcc point that mean that you can make one is to five 
by using this connection, this connection. So you bring one five volts to this A, and it is equal to what B C D E. So you can use B C D E as five volts points. So this is the concept which has been used in the breadboard. So generally power supply. So these are the these are the columns like this. So many columns are there. So up to thirty columns are there which you can use it. And again, again this is different. This this column is not connected to this column. F F G H I J columns are there. Similarly, thirty columns are available here also. Now what is this? These are special lines. It's a power lines or power bus. See, look at that. If I keep on one uh, point, all are internally connected. That means that all of this row is internally connected. So generally, we use the power supply. Uh, we will bring the power supply points to this point and use this uh, these pins as a power supply bus. Bus means set of signals. I use this complete pins for supplying the power supply to this circuits. Whatever I'm going to use it here. Now to start with, I'll bring the power supply. I'll make a power supply bus live. So I'll go to the five volts. Click on that. So I will use this. I will leave it here. So now we'll change the color to red. So now it becomes what uh, the five volts bus. That means that whenever I require a five volts, I can use any one of the pins uh, pins to derive the five volts to my circuit. Now similarly ground. So I will click on the ground. So use this, place this, and connect this. Black. So I will left it. Now what will happen? Now these the whenever I require ground, I use any one of the pins. Whenever I require five volts, I use any one of the pins. I'll be using it. Now I'll place the component. I'll take the first resistor. Sorry, LED. I'll take it. I'll place it here. It's always you have to place the component LEDs like this, or any other component of this two pins like that. You cannot place the other way. For example, if I rotate this, so can I place like this? No, you should not place like this. What will happen? I said they are all internally connected. When you place this, they place like this. What will happen? Both will get shorted. The component will be lost. I said no. You are spoiling the component. You should not short the pins of a component like that. So that is why it should be on the two vertical uh, columns. So I am just rotating it. I'm keeping it back to the normal so orientation. So I will keep it like this. So then what will happen? So this is a different line and this is a different column. So now you can use whatever I want to connect to the cathode. I can use any one of these pins for connecting the cathode. Now we know that in the circuit diagram, cathode is connected to ground. So I'll take any one of these pins. I'll take the near one. I'll just place to the ground. So I have grounded it. So now, since it's a ground, I'll use a black wire. So now, what will happen? Instead of this one, you can bring the component here only. You can place one of the leg on the directly onto this one. Another leg here. You can do like that also. You can able to do it. So I've just made it like this. It depends upon the your convenience of the the way look the look and feel of your circuit. You can do that one. Now, so I require one resistor. So resistor, I've just taken one resistor. So 220 ohm resistor. Telecom resistor. So I'll just change the uh, orientation. I'll keep it horizontally. So I will keep one of the leg directly into the anode point. So they are connected. The resistor is connected to the now anode. Now I will uh, make one wire and connection to the anode. So now I have done this one. So now I'll change the color to red. So I'll say red. So now. Now see that my connection is complete. So cathode is connected to the ground, and anode is connected to. Uh, so sorry, it it should not. It should be permanently on. It should be permanently on. I don't want to be permanently on. I want to control through pin number seven. So I'll remove this wire. This is a wrong connection. So I will make one wire connection from here to directly from to here. So I'll make one wire like this. So now let's say I'll give it as a. Uh, Blue color, okay. Now it's ready. So now what is I have done? So I have just connected uh, seven, which was which is required from the circuit point of view. I have connected to the anode, and the anode it's a uh, through the resistor. I am driving the LED. So my circuit is completed. Now, so now I'll take a switch. I'll take the switch. Where do you place the switch? As I said, the four legs are provided for mechanical stability. You can place between the Between these two, between this area, where the center there is some space is there, no, you can place over that. So the what will happen? Two legs, you place here, and the two legs here. These two legs are for support. I'm using. I'm not using for the circuit point of view. 
I am using these two legs for the connection point of view. Now, once these two legs are available, I have to make a connection for that. As we know already, so one leg can be connected permanently to VCC. So I can take one leg, connect permanent to VCC because one point to be VCC. So I'll make this a red. So it's a VCC is done. Now another leg I require a resistor. So resistor is a 10k ohms. <clears throat> I can just uh, change the orientation. So I change the orientation. Now I'll bring that to here. So okay. So now uh, another point I have to pull down. So pull down to the VCC. So I'll make a connection and pull down to pull down to ground. So I'll use a black wire for that. Now I have pulled down. So now I have connected to the ground. And, uh, I connected this point to the ground, other point you will need. So the point where it's pulled down to the ground, that point I'll use it to read the data. So I will take one of the wire from here, from here. So I'll go to here and use it to the pin number two. Pin number two I used, B2, I used. So I've just given to pin number two. So I use a different color for that. So let's say blue or purple or pink or something, I've used it. Now, Look at that. My connections on the resistor and the key side is correct. So one end I connected to VCC. So the other end I pulled down and the same point I connected to pin number two. Now when I press the switch, LED should blink. So run this code. I have not changed the code because only thing I've used a breadboard. Now let's say we we'll press this switch and see that whether it works or not. See it's working. Now my, I've replaced the, the circuit which is outside the breadboard onto the breadboard. Now it looks better. It is easy for me to add few more LEDs, few more switches, few more component sensors, everything board, easy to debug my circuit. So this is how a breadboard can be used to build your circuits. So now you have to practice both of these two yourself. Practice. After the practice of this one, what you have to do is, I have sent one document file for you. One document, one PPT I have sent. In the document file, Arduino document, if you want, I'll open the document. Uh, so I'll, I'll share the document and show you what you have to experiment after doing these two experiments. First two, these two, whatever I did, do yourself today only on your own. After finishing these two, then you have to do two experiments. So which one I'll just share and tell you. So I will share that document. It's already I've mailed you. So, so this is the document I've sent. What is that document? So building your innovations using Arduino is a document I sent. So in that, a few projects I've given. So work on the first two projects. After finishing whatever I've done in the class today, then do these things. So what are the things you have to do is, uh, ah, first project is control panel with a switch and a lights. This project you build. It has got the three LEDs and the one switch is there. So what is the logic of the LED is? So green LEDs, when the switch is not pressed, green LED is always on. When the switch is pressed, there's a toggling between these two LEDs will happen on, off, on, off, will be happening, toggling happening. When you release the switch, again, green LED on. This type of concept is required in many of the projects, this, this fundamental logic. So you build this circuit. So the connection is also shown. You can use the way you want, not required you to use the same pins, any pins you can use. This is one method. So I've shown this method. Uh -huh. So this is how you can able to use this one. So look at this circuit is also given there. Explanation is also given for that. So build that. So other thing what is required is, uh, next project what I have given is, so traffic light simulation. It is nothing but three LEDs are there. You have to make the, like a traffic light signal, green, so yellow, red, like that. Sequence you have to create in the program. The only thing changes are written is I have called the functions. So that indicating that you can invoke the function from a loop function. So three functions I'm calling from a loop. So finish do this projects today. So since you, are, you can, you have to demonstrate this each one of you for me and I'll ask certain questions when you are coming for the lab on Friday. So why I'm doing now only because it's easy for me to uh, continue in the tomorrow theory session. If you don't practice and come to the tomorrow theory session, you will not understand again. So I want you today only you complete this one. Uh, with the two experiments. So because all other students have completed. So then it's easy for me to continue tomorrow theory. We have to cover 
tomorrow little advanced topics on the arduino side so i expect everyone to work today only finish that one keep it ready so in the friday lab session you have to log in and you have to show me share your screen and show me the outputs i will ask some certain basic questions regarding that you have to do that in front of me so any doubts you can another one or two minutes you can ask me otherwise we will wind up the session so uh, i actually implemented this in a, a slightly different way okay. like i didn't use the if clause and all that okay. i just uh, using the same code as the like just the plain blinking without the push button yeah. what i did is like i just um, like put the push button between the uh, pin number 7 and uh, the uh, i think the cathode input of the i mean sorry anode input of the led and so okay. that that gave the exact same result so is that also okay 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 it's so okay but they should not get exclamatory symbol hmm? yeah yeah that uh, i have any of the components those components in the circuit side you take care and yeah, in the program yeah. side if you are you can achieve in a different ways so yeah, only so when you build the complex circuit you find out which is better for you you can use that one yeah because it was this program was a lot smaller if that way okay so, you can okay. use it yeah yeah you can use it you can always change the programs any of the programs what we give you can use your own way also you can able to develop this is one method this is uh, to make your understanding we make it little it may look like a longer in the beginning but you will understand the concepts okay sir any other questions so if you are very clear so prasanna no questions sir okay okay so hope uh, you understood and make sure that today you do this if you already done it it's okay those who are not done for the first time you doing i request you to make sure that today only you, you log into the tinkercad and experiment and those who have got a boards i request you to work on the board itself and those who are not ordered for the board you are you are learning for the first time this embedded system subject please order for the boards so you will learn certain fundamentals so which will be very full to really helpful when you build some iot big projects using iot Okay we will wind up the session you can quit the meeting now